Hey guys, CDTV here, reporting live from heaven apparently. It is such a hot day today, so if I start developing sweat patches throughout this video, we're just not gonna mention it in the comments, okay? Oh, why don't you take the beanie off to cool down? Why don't you respect my choices? But anyway, it's about time I did this. The ratings for my worst rappers in the game series has not reflected my opinion for a lot of rappers for a while now. Whether that's down to their music improving over time, or just their music that I've already heard growing on me over time. And that needs to change before we move forward with adding new people to the list. So today I'm gonna do exactly what the title says and go through every rapper I've covered in this series, what rating they originally got, and there will be a link down in the description for the worst rappers in the game playlist if you haven't seen all the episodes or if you just wanna rewatch them, talking about if anything has changed, what their new ratings are, and at the end we'll have a current fresh list that actually represents how I feel about all these rappers right now because some of them are way too low and some of them are a bit too high. I won't be going super in depth considering how many rappers I have to cover here but this video is more about the ratings and what changes have been made to them, not the actual details of how I landed on those ratings. But before we get started, you know what future CDTV in different clothes means? Thank you to Swagbucks for sponsoring today's video. Swagbucks is a great way to get some extra cash or gift cards for stores like Amazon. Through completing surveys, playing mobile games, you can even earn points doing your online clothes shopping when you're getting that new drip. I'm using Swagbucks myself at the moment and I'm saving up my points to get that Starbucks gift card so I have like what? five free days of coffee to give me my boost for the day? Or if coffee isn't your cup of tea, then you can choose the PayPal option as a reward to get money towards buying your favorite hip hop vinyls, like Reckless by Nav. So click my link down in the description below and you'll get a $5 bonus when you take your first survey. Much love to Swagbucks for sponsoring today's video. Back to the worst rappers in the game re-ranking, let's go. Just remember that the ratings are purely my opinion based on what I like, and the ratings are based off of everything I've heard from the artist, but their newest stuff has the most influence. So, let's do it. <laughs> Here is where it started, in 2016 with episode 1, and quite unsurprisingly, I disagree with a lot of that video now. Also fun fact, all the slides in that video were made with PowerPoint, a really time consuming style that I quickly abandoned for this series. The thumbnails are still made on PowerPoint though, and that's probably why they look so cheap, but I like them. I think it's very safe to say Thug has grown on me massively since the original video on him. 3 out of 10 for his voice. Couldn't disagree more with that now. I do still occasionally get annoyed by Thug's voice on certain tracks and on his earlier stuff, enough for his rating to not be top tier, but the way that he uses his voice as an instrument and the way it bends and fluctuates around the instrumentals he uses is beautiful for the most part. Same thing with his flow. What other mainstream trap artist could glide all over a hard song like Homie? I be the true poet. I, they want me dead, but I can't ever die. They live in false, but I can never lie. And earlier in the same year, slide over a Calvin Harris beat on a song with Ariana Grande and Pharrell. T -Y, T -Y, Newport. Newport. I want these. Light For too long, Young Thug has been too low on this list. It's time to move him up. He's one of the greatest and most interesting individuals in the trap genre. Even if I don't love every single thing he puts out, his music is something special. The ratings for Ray Shrimmerd have only changed very slightly on account for their Shrem Life 3 album, easily the weakest in the trilogy by a decent margin. I still like the first two in that series though and pretty much feel the same way about them now, a lot of bangers across the songs there. The only real difference with their original projects is that I like some of the tracks on Shrem Life 2 more now that I didn't like originally, like Start a Party and Set the Roof. Still a fairly good rating for them. Yeah, I don't wanna be like nobody else. Hey. Looking so good, I might ride myself. Hey. Realized I gotta hide the wealth. I don't know what I was thinking when I give Yachty a higher rating for vocals than Young Thug. Teenage Emotions wasn't out when I made that original video, so I guess that's what I'll say to make it seem better, but still. 
What was I thinking? Yati is an artist that's got so much worse to me over the years and his new ratings reflect that. He has not dropped an album as entertaining, fun and endearing as Lil Bo since it came out and the only thing I've really increased here slightly is his flow rating. Just because I appreciate his rapping on tracks like For Hot 97 and some of the Lil Boat 2 songs where he's rapping a bit more. Mostly a decrease here though. Look at this album, it's flopping again, not taking a break, I'm not stopping again. Too much crap, bands, bands, bellow for- Out of all the videos I have uploaded in this series so far, this has to be the one I'm most embarrassed by. Like, it's not just the low ratings, it's also the fact that I didn't get this really obvious line on Canadian Goose. On Canadian Goose, I heard a fairly confusing lyric as well. <laughs> now, I, I really don't understand this line. Now, fuck can either be a noun or a verb. As a noun, as a noun it is not cold, and as a verb, you'd hope that it isn't cold when you fuck. He's literally cold, so he needs a Canada Goose jacket to stay warm. What is so hard to understand about that past me? Anyway, as you can see, and as I have referenced many, many times on my channel before, Uzi is an artist that has grown on me so much since the Worst Rappers video. Listening to his music just makes me feel happy and on top of the world, something that I think his vocals, his flow, and his beats contribute to. If only past me could see me now, he would absolutely hate my taste. I haven't actually checked it against the other ratings, but I'm pretty sure this is the biggest increase you're gonna see in this video. Bad love vibe, she pleasing me, spin a whole M, yeah, easily. I get the cash and put it up fast, I think I got JB in me. Uzi has the biggest jump up in my re-ranking of this list, but 21 Savage comes damn near close, with an increase of 14 points overall. And his boost comes almost entirely from new music. I still find the original Savage Mode and his other mixtapes, which my original score was based off of, pretty sleep inducing. But man, since then, he has found a way to adapt his style and make it a lot better to listen to. Now you might notice that his voice rating still isn't particularly high, and that's because while he has improved vocally, I still don't think he naturally has the most interesting voice to listen to. But I'll be damned if he doesn't use the voice he was given a million times more effectively now. Props to 21 Savage for improving so much, so quickly. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm like 30 minutes into recording this and the sun is really killing me right now. Probably the first time you've heard this name in a while. And you might be surprised by me saying this, but I think that's kind of a shame. Designer isn't the type of artist that's gonna be in my constant or even frequent rotation, but he has a lot of pretty good sounding songs and his LOD project has a handful of hard bangers on there. And one of his newest songs, Amen, that goes insane. If this segment of the video has you interested and you check out just one designer song, make sure it's that one. I genuinely think designer is a little underappreciated right now for making trap bangers. Some people aren't gonna like how high some of his ratings are, but I genuinely think a lot of people just wrote him off as a one hit wonder when he deserves at least a few more hits in my opinion. I'm starting the let's appreciate designer movement. I mean, the ratings still aren't super high, but let's appreciate designer more. He's perfectly capable of making songs that hit hard and I'd recommend giving his new singles at least one listen, just giving them a chance. At the very least, the production value is high and he still has the energetic performances that you would expect from someone that constantly talks and moves like his heart pumps amphetamines. Now, his heavily auto-tuned singing tracks aren't as good because when he does that, he mainly just sounds like a blend of Future and Travis Scott. But hey, I like it when he goes in over dark beats. Rocky Louis like I'm Armstrong. Bitch, I think I'm a knob, bro. I got every ball, man. Yep, none of this changes much except the beat score which I've lowered. Kodak does have nice production, but man, I overrated it at first. In all fairness, this was only episode 8, so I hadn't been expanding my hip-hop music taste into mainstream stuff for all that long at this point, so the fact that his production stood out to me as the best part by far compared to the rest of his music made me score it a bit too highly. Still good, just not a 9 out of 10. That is the biggest change here. Kodak is just a rapper that I'm never gonna like. The way that he raps and the way that his voice sounds, 
It's not appealing to me. He'll never be a rapper that I listen to by choice. Okay, I've been up for some days, I ain't got time to lay. Just to drown out all these thoughts, I try to kind of things. Here we have one of the most controversial episodes that I still get comments on to this day of people telling me that my music taste is trash because I hate Travis Scott. When I gave him the highest overall rating I've ever given in this series and an enjoyment rating of 8.5 out of 10. People just see red when they see worst and their favourite rapper's name in the title. And that's one of the reasons why videos in this series do so well. Worst rappers in the game is a great title if you ask me. And look at this, his score has been bumped up even higher now. Travis is now the one holding a 9 out of 10 beat rating, not Kodak. And I think that's deserved. Travis has like three producers minimum on almost every album track. And for the most part, you can tell with how epic, grand, and polished a lot of his production is. Also, you have those Mike Dean synths, which just make me want to come. I just don't think he'll ever be topped in this series for me. Travis Scott albums are to the trap sound what blockbuster movies are to the film world. All of his albums just have an atmosphere that absorbs you and takes you to a whole different world. Now let's just hope that Utopia is an amazing album that lives up to the quality of his other three studio albums. Take the lesson, put it all in the air. Too many days gone by. See my phone waiting until I reply. I've definitely gotten into Future's music more since I made that video on him, and I didn't necessarily listen to his best projects for that video. One of them was Hendrix. But he still can be quite a hit or miss artist for me. Like, he's one of those artists that I want to like a lot, like, in the realm of an 8 out of 10, but I still struggle to listen to a full album of his and stay completely engaged the whole way through. For the most part, at least, I just listened to his Monster mixtape a few days ago, and that was pretty great. Almost every track hit for me on my first listen. But then I also listened to his Beast Mode mixtape with Zaytoven a couple days ago, and I loved the production throughout that project, but Future was boring on about four or five out of the eight tracks. Layup was great, but that's the main one that stuck with me from it. Overall, there's some tracks where I listen to them and I'll think, man, Future is really boring on this one, and I don't care for it at all. But then, there's other tracks where I listen to them and I'm like, man, Future is the only artist who could have made this song hit like this. Basically, when he hits for me, he hits. I did underrate him the first time I covered him in this series, and I do respect the influence that he's had over the mainstream trap subgenre, but it's not 100% of the time that I'll like his music. It's more around 60 to 70% of the time that I'll like his songs. The decrease in ratings for this one, that's what happens when you oversaturate your sound. Ever since Culture 2, it's been downhill for Migos mostly. I'm still gonna listen to Culture 3 and I'm intrigued to see how it sounds, but man... Culture 2 really flattened my interest in their sound and made it a million times less special to me than it was at first. Their flow is still iconic and mostly entertaining and occasionally they'll drop a track by Need It where I'm just encapsulated by the way that they work off of each other and bounce off of each other with their flows. So even if I've heard that flow so many damn times, I won't drop the rating for it all that much. I also think this is another case of me overrating them instrumentally at first. Yeah, their beats are mostly nice, a few of them are pretty great, but overall I don't think it's production that stands out to me all that much to get an 8.5. At this point, for the most part, it's just standard trap production. Now one thing to note is that the original ratings here are not the ones I gave to X in the worst rappers in the game video on him. He was one that I already re-ranked a year or so ago without making a video to do it. So has anything changed from the sort of new ratings for X? Not really. Those ratings pretty much were my re-rankings based off of his newer material and as you guys know if you've watched any of my other videos on him, I'm just not personally a fan of his music. That's just how I feel about it. Of course, before we go on, I want to say regardless of my feelings about his music, rest in peace to XXXTentacion, as he's one of the two rappers that I've covered in this series to pass away at way too young of an age. So rest in peace. Call it the plug, I pull up and get out the pack. Run up on gang, you know you get wet. Two, three bullets, they hit your butt.
really won't smoke, you don't want problems. No. All of my niggas came up from nothing. Yeah, it's safe to say nothing has changed here. Let's move on so I don't have to slander King Soldier in this video. Never too much. Never too much. Never too much. Never too much. As you can tell, I really did not like Carty before. And then whole lot of red happened. And while it didn't make me a fan or make me like Carty a crazy amount, it was still an album I enjoyed. It's the best Carty album to me, but my updated ratings also include what is the worst Carty album to me, Die Lit, which wasn't out at the time that I made this original video. Yes, Die Lit is the worst Carty project in my opinion, and Whole Lot of Red is the best one. They kind of balance out the scores a bit, whereas his ratings would be higher across the board if he just went straight from self-titled to Whole Lot of Red. Still though, an improvement is an improvement. <gasps> Illuminati, my wake up tomorrow and buy a Bugatti. Illuminati. I could not care less about Lil Pump's next project at this point. Or the singles that he keeps saying he'll drop if he gets 100k comments on Instagram. Come to think of it, that must be the reason why he hasn't dropped in months. This man went from being a rapper I hugely disliked when I did the original video on him, and he didn't even have a single official project out, to someone who became a bit of a guilty pleasure of mine, to someone who could now drop an album and I would only listen purely because I talk about music for a living. Yes, his ratings did go up overall, but that is because he was god awful when I made that original video on him. He has improved a little, but his music was just never destined to last long, and it's reached the point where it's just not needed anymore. At least not in my music library. Me, he push a pedal somewhere in the metal, six feet under is a new level. I am considered the rebel cause I never settle out cause I'm hot like a kettle. The biggest difference for me here was the lyrics. I think I did not give Ski Mask enough credit for the creativity and imaginative imagery in his lyrics when I first made that episode. I guess I didn't rank him higher because he doesn't have many personal, introspective, or deep lyrics, but that's not something that I think his music needs anymore. The way he finds more complex or colourful ways to say very simple things in almost every line of every song is really cool to me and something that stands out. I think it's easy to take his lyricism for granted, like I did initially, but if you break it down, the way that he plays around with words and what they mean is impressive. Oh, also, this was another episode that was a very unpopular one with the like-dislike ratio. Again, despite being one of the more positively scored ones. It's also the most viewed in the series, I think, so that's pretty cool. I have listened to Dex almost zero times since doing the original video on him and now, so I had to listen to some of his 2020 music to see if anything had changed and see what I think of it, and yeah, pretty much nothing has changed here. Dex Meets Dexter has some nice songs though, and hearing him sound less cartoonish on the songs was cool. Unfortunately, on the rest of his music, Music, it's not great, therefore things are staying mostly the same. Feel like itchy goat, nigga, I'm a hollow. Talk down on it, game, get some hollows. Are you kidding me? Something was flying around in here. I think a fly got in. I might just abandon this video right now and make it like that fly episode of Breaking Bad. Trippy is never gonna be an artist I listen to super consistently, but I don't think I gave certain aspects of his music enough credit at first. Yes, I still kinda dislike it whenever his vocals get too wild and rough sounding, but overall he does have a fairly nice voice and has a pretty good range with it too. Trippy is incredibly hit or miss for me, but I do find myself revisiting songs like Death, Sleepy Hollow, Hellboy, Taking a Walk, Dark Knight Dummo, Toxic Waste, and 1400-999 Freestyle a fair bit. I do like him more now, he just won't be one of my favourites on here anytime soon. Scarlord is weird to me and honestly the most difficult to rate here because when I listen to him, I respect what he does with fusing the trap and metal genres into this energetic, brutal sound and how as his project goes on he seems to be expanding the sort of vocal techniques that he uses. He's using more vocal techniques from metal and expanding the range of beats that he lays these vocals down over. But 
nine times out of ten, it's not what I want to listen to. I respect what he does a lot, and I do think it gives him his own definable sound, but it's just not necessarily for me. Again, as with everything in this series, it just comes down to my personal music preference. I will say though, when you're genuinely angry about something, no one else's music acts as a better stress relieving outlet than Scar's. I'm not a very angry person, but the couple of times that I do get mad at something, going for a walk or a run and blasting Scar's music through some headphones just gets all that energy out and I feel good after it. So it does have a very specific and honestly pretty useful application in my life. It's just something I'm personally not in the mood to listen to most of the year. I think it is still impressive that his music isn't really for me and his ratings are still pretty decent. If you like the trap metal sound, I think he does it pretty damn well. We gon' pop out every night till the sun comes up. When I originally covered Smoke Purp in my worst rappers in the game series, I said that I felt he was someone that had potential. And then he went on to appear on three consecutive worst albums of the year lists of mine. So the ratings went down. He's just become one of the most boring rappers to listen to, so it's a no-brainer that he moves far down on the ranking. Just check out these videos that are on the screen right now and you'll get an idea of why his ratings are lower. Six Nine dropped the worst album of 2020. Spoilers if you haven't seen that video yet, by the way. Of course, he is going to be moving further down this list than before. He got worse in every way since his stint in prison, and I am extremely less inclined to check out anything new that he drops. He's just a bad rapper whose gimmick has lost its steam quickly. On to the next one. Shawty wasn't with me when I was dead bro. That's the reason why I had to let her go. Riding with my brother to the- Lil Skies is still someone I enjoy, just less so than when I first did that video on him. I think at this point, I definitely enjoy him more as a singles artist than an album artist. That four song run where he dropped Real Ties, Magic, Going Off, and Riot. That was really solid to me. Those are songs I've consistently listened to since they came out. Whereas with his Unbothered album, there's only really two or three songs that aren't the singles that I revisit sort of frequently on there. And around six or seven out of the 14 on his Shelby album. So there's definitely songs on those projects that I feel like are filler or skips, but even if his projects aren't the strongest overall to me, Skies is still someone that I think is very relaxing to listen to and very easy to listen to, so he's someone that's constantly in my rotation. My overall enjoyment has decreased slightly, but overall, he's still one of the rappers I listen to the most consistently on here. I like girls with pretty toes. I like getting hit some dome. Not much has changed, some things have went down, what did you expect, and that's it. Moving on. Oh, I go to suit, I'm feeling righteous. Yeah. I know that the truth is hard to digest. While there isn't the biggest jump here, just has grown on me over time to a degree. I wasn't necessarily hard on him on the original video on him, I still actually agree with most of it, but I do have a little bit more appreciation for his lyrics now, and the Goodbye and Good Riddance project in particular. That is his best album now as far as I'm concerned, and songs like Scared of Love and Used To, which I mentioned disliking in the original video, are some of my most played from it now. And I have to acknowledge the fact that this man was a freestyling machine. After watching his freestyles, I have zero doubt that he just went into the booth and came up with his songs off the top of his head without writing anything down. Now, I don't necessarily think this alone makes music good or it's necessarily a good thing in some cases, but he was undeniably talented at it. To freestyle these melodies on the spot that become so catchy, that is impressive to me. Even if I'm not the biggest fan of everything he's made, it just seems like rapping is what he was born to do. And sadly, this is the second artist I was referring to earlier on, who passed away incredibly early into his life. So rest in peace to Juice World. Gone way too soon. Woke up feeling like a million bucks. Took a shower after I'm done getting sucked. Too much drip, I, think we I really had the audacity to put Nav at above a 5 for his voice in the original video. When Reckless has vocals that sound like this. I'm scared I'm never gonna change. I'm addicted to the money and fame. 
Nav is still a guilty pleasure artist of mine. You'll notice that Good Intentions was not on my worst albums of 2020 list because quite a few tracks on it grew on me. But there are still quite a few aspects of his music that I can criticize heavily. Still though, despite all his flaws, I find a lot of his music very easy to vibe to, and I admittedly have a lot of good memories tied to his music. For those of you who don't know, this is what me and my friends used to listen to all the time, and they're friends that I don't see a lot anymore, so listening to Nav reminds me of them, as weird as that is to say. That does influence my enjoyment, and I think that's okay as long as I acknowledge it. Basically, I don't think he's an amazing artist, but I listen to him pretty often. Praise be to King Nav. Kid Boo is still one of the most garbage rappers I have ever heard. I only like vibes that come with a vibe. Tired of my main, she tired of my side. Rather work nine to five than to get nine to five. Blueface lost his unique spark really damn quickly. Refer to my reaction to the Dirtbag EP and my worst albums of 2020 list if you want a little more context for these ratings. Black Lives Matter is a valuable movement, but all lives matter ain't racist or stupid. It's non black humans who don't feel included. All There's only really been some minor changes here, nothing really of note to dive into. While we're talking about old Tommy Boy, don't worry, you will still be getting the Gravestones review, I promise but I need to wait about a month till I move out of this apartment because the upload speed is complete ass and I don't want it to take three or four days to upload a beefy 30 to 40 minute video. Although this one is probably gonna be around 30 minutes, but I didn't plan that. I didn't know this one was gonna be this long until right now recording it. Hope you guys understand. I've been getting it since the taller. I keep dollars on my head. Been a real one is my motto, hell my problems. There's only really been one small change here. You'll notice I've sort of flipped Gunner's ratings for voice and flow, and that's because a small realization hit me recently. I don't think it's mainly Gunner's flow that makes him as a rapper boring to me. It's that flow in combination with his dry ass voice. His delivery is the worst part, not the way that his words hit the beat. I still don't think his flow is crazy, hence the rating for it still not being super high, but his voice is the dominant factor in me not liking his music as much as I would like to with his really good beat selection. And there we go. That covers it for every single rapper I've talked about in my worst rappers in the game series so far. On the screen right now is the new updated ranking that will be at the bottom of the description of every worst rappers in the game episode going forward. So let me know what you guys think and if you can be bothered what your own list of these 28 rappers ranked would look like. Next up, I'll be covering either NBA Youngboy or Lil Baby, so leave your predictions down in the comments below for where you think they're gonna rank amongst this new list. It feels good to have this new ranking out there because this much more accurately reflects my opinions on all these rappers ranked against each other. In the future though, if there's any changes that I wanna make to the ratings, I'm just gonna do it and not make a video about it. Maybe I'll mention it in the next Worst Rappers in the Game video if anything has changed, but I'm not gonna make a full re-ranking video like this again. This was just a one-time thing because I thought it would be pretty fun. Bro, I don't think that's a fly, that's a wasp. Okay, I'm gonna finish this up real quick. As always, much love to my patrons who are on screen right now for supporting the channel, some of whom got to see this video early, and a special shout out to my top supporters on there, Cyrus Formidoni, Reagan Burt, I am Regent Tyson and Battle Toad Cancer Bath. That's a great name. So that's all I've got to say for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in the next one. And this is CDTV Productions. Signing out.